Yo, what up? We're back for another Coco Thoughts. Um, yeah, I mean, it's an update from, I guess, last time I recorded to now. Uh, to be honest, nothing very much happened. I only just, like, watched anime and saw that Resident Evil 4 is making or remaking a game, I guess. Uh, Diablo 4 dropped. Um, I kind of binge watched another anime, which apparently is not complete yet. It needs like one more episode. Unfortunately, I didn't see because then I could have just binge watched it when episode 12 was out instead of having to wait. What else happened? Uh, unfortunately, it got freaking cold. At least today, it's like. It was 18 degrees, and then it was the 30. Uh, really, didn't really do anything else. Kind of looked into getting into carpentry a little bit. What am I becoming a carpenter? I just don't know if I can multitask like I do at my current job. At least where I currently work, I can, like, uh simultaneously do my job air quotes and not do it i can i've uh kind of become extremely dependent on my phone for work if i ever don't have it it's it's freaking dreadful i'm super reliant on technology i think and i don't understand how people can live without it I accidentally forgot to bring my phone to work. And it wasn't really like a long day. It was just like the final day of the week. And a lot of things were happening when I didn't have my freaking phone. Like, uh, there's a dude that I watched who's called uh, LOL Tyler 1. And he just went to Berlin, Germany. To uh, just play League of Legends. And I missed the intro to that, which would have been interesting. Because I watched him go to Korea before to play League. And League's not a very good game. It, it's If you play ranked, it's not very fun. But uh, it's, it's always interesting to watch somebody who's playing a, it's like kind of playing a character try to play a game seriously in another country like he did for uh, League in Korea. And that one was interesting because he, he would freaking play like 20, almost like a 24 hour stream of playing League of Legends. And I I don't know how somebody can do that. I'll, uh, I guess I'll like segue into Esports and pro scene. I, I think that I feel like I've learned over the course of like playing like CSGO as a kid or playing League of Legends now. But I play like a little bit of Overwatch. All of these games I averaged at at least for my peak and not right now because I, I think I'm kind of garbage. In CSGO, I peaked at Master Guardian Elite, I think, as a kid. And I played on a Acer laptop with a, a track mouse pad, which uh, is probably not the, the thing that you want to use if you're trying to supposedly live out your childhood dream of becoming a, a pro CSGO player. Because... Uh, there was like an MLG tournament, and I was really itching to go there, but it was like a very small tournament because it was in uh, North America, and I, there's like literally nobody who really watches esports in America. Uh, America's mostly all about uh, football 
maybe like a little bit of soccer, baseball, golf. That's probably it. To be honest, I, I'm kind of tempted to almost get into baseball. I kind of like baseball. I, I thought it was really boring just having somebody pitch a ball and just having somebody hit it. I feel like it's kind of more interesting than that after watching a Germa baseball, him doing his event. That that was actually kind of inter entertaining. I don't know. And also watching some of the clips from sports anime about people playing baseball and how they like re well they basically animate like real life events from the sport. And that's like super interesting to see. All the motion, the the music, just viewing the an the beautiful animation of like a batter hitting a ball, and then uh, the pitcher like narrowly dodges it, and then somebody who's on what is it like second base catches the ball. Uh, make sure well, make sure to uh, well, makes sure to. What well, I I don't know I I think they just like catch the ball, and then it uh makes the person who's running to that base out and then they throw it and then the dude uh, who catches the ball throws it to first base yeah it's very nice to freaking see that animated and to see like the real life version of it right next to it is so nice it's such a work of art but i don't know i, I really wish that i really wish NA would care more about esports a little bit. I feel like I feel like we could have like an okay esports team. I mean, besides like South America, South America I think is more about uh esports than North America, I think. At least from what I remember when I played CSGO and I like followed it really closely. I've like watched Virtus Pro get its uprising on DE Train, being like a underdog, and then to proceed to I think win the major that same year, and I think it was like in twenty, I would say seventeen or yeah, I think it was like twenty seventeen, and then to like also grow up during the time when like Shroud was starting to uh pop off on CS:GO and Freakazoid, Skadoodle, Nothing, and Sean Gares. It, it, is, it is also very funny that I can remember that entire team name, but I can't remember somebody's name who introduces themselves in real life to me. I, I don't understand how the brain works. But if somebody freaking opened up my noggin, they would just find just a an absolute mess. They're just random things that are just jumbled together. I bet my brain's like literally just somebody's fridge. And like their kid has like these magnets that they would just stick on it. And it's just freaking everywhere. And the kid's like trying to make a word. And they know the word. But they just don't know how to spell it or something. That's literally just my brain. It's just a freaking scramble. I have to write down half the things. Otherwise, I'll just freaking forget it. Because I'll just move on to the next thing. Or procrastinate. Procrastination is... If procrastination was a job, I would be the best at it. And to be honest, there's, uh, there's probably a lot of jobs where procrastination's uh, the main point of it. But uh, going back to esports as uh, i don't i can't think of like any current counter strike teams cuz i don't know who really watches counter strike anymore i'm pretty sure we're just like waiting for csgo 2 and maybe that'll uh cause a shift maybe a big brand name will look for some young talent in csgo 2 and they'll probably be like former csgo pro players 
which I don't know. I was watching a lot of people play CS:GO last week. Well, this week, technically, because it's only Sunday. Uh, I watched like Shroud and Hasanabi play with Tarek. Um, what was it? I think Tarek was on formerly Team Liquid, and he would go go up against Shroud. I think like history. But now he's a Valorant player, or Valorant pro rather. What else? They played with uh, Moist Critical. Well, Hassan, I'll be playing with Moist Critical, Ludwig. I feel like I'm forgetting one more name. Hassan, is it? I'm missing like the, the fifth. Oh, Disguised Toast was the fifth. And then uh, when I was watching Crowd, he was playing the new maps for CSGO. Saying that was CSGO 2 footage. And he was playing with uh, Tarek. I think Skadoodle. For sure. XQC. I can't remember the last dude. Unfortunately. But yeah, they played. Shroud is still an absolute god of freaking CSGO. He's still getting headshots. Had a eighty eight percent headshot percentage, and he literally just he doesn't even really even play the game anymore. I think now he just like, I'm pretty sure now he's actually just literally playing Diablo four. What are the games? I think he like plays Escape from Tarkov, or he did like a little bit, but it's just it's insane how much talent he has. He's not he's not even like American, he's Canadian. But still, just North American talent. I feel like there's so much of it that can make like a really nice like swing in esports in America, but we're just like not nurturing the talent. Cause at least now referring to League of Legends with LOL Tyler One. Him with his betting situation of people from not even this region just betting games and throwing them it's not even like in a professional setting but usually if you want to have like a nice like professional setting you know you have to have like good competition at your rank so he's like diamond and master tier usually maybe even like grandmaster depending on like what his account is and having people just like play for the stream or whatever kind of doesn't really help anybody. I don't know. And then you watch like somebody else who's playing League of Legends at like the same time, like Balf Drew 2, IRL. Um, who else is it? I can't think of anybody else I watch. But between those three. They have, I haven't really seen any, anybody in those, like, uh, streamers ever, like, run it down. Any players in those games, like, ever run it down. Like they do for freaking Tyler1. And by run it down, I mean, uh, have, like, over 20 plus deaths. And, uh, stealing bounties as well. Or just kill stealing. I I feel like I feel like NA could have some really good freaking pro players, and I and I'm pretty sure literally the majority of NA pro players are mostly just professionals from other regions that came to America. I feel, and I don't think that there's any like native. Um, any American, I, I, you can't even say like pure blood for American because American is not like pure blood at all. There's nothing pure. Besides Native Americans, Native Americans are pure. Um, I don't know.
there's just not too many freaking American players, really. Well, I guess American would be technically like anything. But most of the players that are on like NA teams, I think, are mostly from like the Asian. What is it like continent? I think I'm pretty sure continent is it, or Asian Asian region. And then some of them are from the EU region that we like bought out, and then they come over here. I don't know. Americans just like don't have like any skin in the game <laughs> for these uh, pro games. But I don't know. I mean, the EU is like kind of more oriented toward it, toward that, because uh, they have like degrees for it. I don't even know if America has any degrees. I'm sure if you probably looked, you could probably find something really specific. Maybe. Or maybe some schools might even have, like, a an eSports club. I know that's a thing now. I wish I had that when I was in freaking school. That would be cool. I have a group of five playing CSGO. I don't know. I know at least, at least when I used to play it, I had like a team of maybe two other people that were of a similar rank, and I went with them like through like Gold Nova, like a little bit. I think they were both like Gold Nova one or two, and I was like Gold Nova four. It would just help me get out of there. And some of them are still on my friends list, too. Apparently, one of them contacted me recently. Which I was cool. Maybe I'll ask some of those dudes if they're playing uh, CSGO 2. Maybe we could, like, team up again. But I'm sure our skill will be incredibly different. But, I don't know. It just depends on what, how that game plays. If they get rid of, like... CSGO 2 will be a better game... Actually, let me just say, freaking Valorant. I think Valorant is a like a very mechanics heavy game, but I feel like it's relatively easy. But CS:GO is like, I think like the only thing that really matters for CS:GO is just getting off the the smokes, flash, and then get like at least one or two entry frags. But then. Valorant is just like completely different because you have like cooldowns and stuff and you have ultimates. And I feel like it's like super easy that way. I don't know. Maybe next week I'll, I'll like play Valorant. And I don't think I'll enjoy it. And then I'll play a CSGO at the same after that and compare. Oh, but, but then I have to. You. I, I just hate that I have to play ranked. I think I'm going to play ranked for probably both games and compare. It's going to be really unfortunate for whomever's in my CSGO or Valorant lobby. Because I have no clue how to play the game anymore. And it's been so long. Probably the only thing I'm going to do is just tap on the mouse. Uh, my left mouse button. I'm not even going to hold it down. Spraying is beyond me. I'm old. I'm already old and washed up. I don't know how to play the game anymore, and I'm a young twenty-four. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it could be fun. But to be honest, I don't know. I don't know if shooters. I feel like shooters like kind of boring. Personally, I don't know. I, I I just need to give it a try, to be honest. Although they they kind of like take control of your PC like a little bit with Valorant. 
to look for any cheating software, which is kind of good. To be honest, most games that you download that have like a, a competitive scene to it, you should have to download something in order to ensure that people are not cheating. Because like back when I used to play CSGO, Valve anti-cheat is not exactly the best thing. It It's not always correct either. And also they kind of force the players that are above, I think it's literally gold level four to do Overwatch and supposedly ban or confirmed uh, like a ban on somebody. At least I think. I don't really know the point of Overwatch. I feel like it's just like a side game because you, you played rank. Well, play, play. You played ranked so much that you got to like gold level four, and like here's like a a side thing to do if you're bored. I don't know. Yeah, besides like CS:GO two, you got Diablo four was announced. Well, not announced. It's a uh, in beta, and I don't understand who would pay. Have, have look, they have the prices listed for one of the bundles. I it's just like the lower lower tier. It's a uh, freaking seventy dollars rounded plus tax, and then you got eighty nine dollars round. Uh, but you got ninety dollars rounded plus tax, and then you got a hundred dollars. I I don't understand who would pay this much just to play a beta for a game that's probably not gonna come out for like another few months. But I guess Diablo 4 is that good. I don't really know the appeal. Obviously, I, I'm not like the target audience. I feel like Diablo is targeted toward older people. Older g gamers. I, I'm pretty sure actually every Blizzard game I feel like is targeted toward older gamers. Like people that are probably late 20s early early 30s and beyond and by late 20s i mean like 28 years old and then upwards you know like 30 40 are, are probably its target audience like same for wow at this point because wow has been around for quite a while like you have to i, I feel like most of the people that paid this amount of money for Diablo 4 are probably like an older population of people or an older age group generally like these people probably paid Diablo 1 or 2 when they were a kid and now they're playing 4 due to uh, nostalgia maybe I don't know I mean, personally, for me, I mean, I didn't really grow up playing Warhammer, but I played Warhammer 2, and I would play 3, but 3 needs to become cheaper. Well, actually, yeah, never mind. I was going to wrap up the Diablo 4 topic, but I'm just going to say that it's, like, super expensive. And then later on, too, you're going to have to probably pay for freaking... $24 worth of DLC, or 25 depending on how charitable they are, with how much they price their content. Because at least like Warhammer 3, their DLC used to be probably $20, and it would have two Legendary Lords, which are just like your playable characters, plus heroes and units that add to the roster to make it better for you. Uh, and then other than that, they, they probably had like a, a mechanic or two for the characters, so it's interesting. They give you an edge. But yeah, but recently it, it went from freaking 20, well not, yeah, 20 to uh, $24. And that was apparently with like four years or five years inflation adjustment. So I'm wondering if Diablo 4 is going to do the same thing and make it uh, $25 per DLC or expansion pack, whatever they call it. And then plus, 
the I'm assuming they probably do like a battle pass. I don't know how much those cost. I know at least when I played Apex, I think battle passes costed uh I think it was twenty dollars. I think. It's just been too long. And to be honest, I, I don't I should hurry up and freaking forget the game. That that game was not worth the time. I don't think. After playing Apex for like freaking two years, I probably could have done anything else and it would have been more enjoyable. I think it was terrible. It's like unreasonably toxic. I feel like games now are just there's too many people who don't want to play. Or there are people that are extremely irritable when you play with them. Uh, and I feel like those people should not play a free-to-play game. And they should probably play a single-player game if they want to relax and not play freaking Apex and get mad. I don't know. I feel like there are better things to do. But anyways, Warhammer 3, because I freaking hop off that. Uh, the Chaos Storps DLC seems kind of good. You're only getting, like, one Legendary Lord. But you do get some pretty... You do get, like, a whole faction that was supposed to be out for the release of the game. Because I'm pretty sure it was, like, one of the teasers for Warhammer 3. I don't know. It looks pretty good. I mean, they're basically like better dwarfs if you've ever played Warhammer uh, 2 or 3. Or the first one. And they, they're kind of like a mix of... What is it? The green skins? Chaos and uh, just dwarfs, really. They got good monsters. They got good infantry units, they got good ranged units, they got cavalry. All that really matters for cavalry is if it can actually get to the flank. And if it's like 80 move, eighty uh, movement speed, whatever. I don't know, 80 points of speed. I, I, I can't remember the number or what it's called. Uh, you got some very good artillery from the looks of it. And usually Chaos Artillery is like very good and you need it for sieges, so. No, no. You got a nice like monster infantry called the Kadaya Fireborn. So that's cool. You got like some magical damage mixed in. And then you got the Kadai Destroyer. War Machine. Yeah, this thing's huge. It looks like freaking... Uh, what was it? It's like the green skin Avatar Gork and Mork. I forget the name of it specifically. But it's basically just like a one big massive unit. So, that's pretty cool. Can't wait to see that thing in action. Had a very nice howl during the trailer. And one thing, at least one thing that CA does correctly, is uh, it's freaking trailers. It's tra Usually the trailers for the games are very good. And I don't understand why they don't add some of the music from the trailers into the game. I feel like a lot of games would really benefit if they had access to like, the trailer music. Like, I play a freaking mobile game called Dokkan Battle. And Dokkan Battle would extremely benefit from using the music from the Dokkan events, which is how you awaken your units. If you could take that music and just listen to it, like, all the time, at will. It, that would be, like, the best thing. But instead, they created a thing called Burst Mode, which is kind of not fun but it's it's debatable whether or not you enjoy it or not it depends on 
what good units you have because it's a gotcha game. And gotcha, you have to literally have the cutting edge units or else you can't do the content with like ease. And it kind of depends on like at what point the unit was released and if they update the units somehow through some in game system or not. It just all depends. But yeah, the, the game would really benefit from having the music available at will. Right, if you want to listen to, have at it. I don't know. And then uh, Resident Evil 4 is coming out. Apparently this week. But apparently next week, because it's freaking today's Sunday. On a Thursday, I think. So that'd be cool. Definitely not gonna buy it because I'm not a Resident Evil fan. I pa I I didn't really. Well, no. I I did watch it while growing up, a little bit. Let me see. I have like some of the titles on my phone. The only one that I watched really that I can recall. Looks like it's only Resident Evil 6. And I thought Resident Evil 6 was kind of entertaining. I watched like two people play it. I don't even know if the dude's like a YouTuber anymore. And I can't remember if it's him who did it. But that was interesting to watch. He had like two personalities and they were kind of funny. They made the game like worth watching. Because I feel like the story didn't really make any sense. But then again, I can't even remember the freaking story. I don't really know. What, what is the story of Resident Evil? Is there an ending, even? Does Resident... Did, like, whatever... Whatever the enemy is, like, ever really stop coming about? I don't really know. Oh yeah, I watched the Resident Evil Biohazard, and I didn't really like that one as well. I forgot, I forgot about that. I think I watched like Markiplier play it, maybe, or something. I wasn't really interested. Watch Resident Evil Village. Resident Evil Village. It was kind of okay, but I don't know. Like, obviously, Lady Dimitrisu or whatever was, like, the biggest impact that that game had on, like, most people's lives, I'm sure. Because it's a tall vampire lady with massive bosom. I just chose the word bosom because it was funny. Nice name. But other than that, you had the fat traitor who later on betrays the main character's kid, I think, because she has, like, some power or something. I don't really know this. I feel like I need, like, a video explaining Resident Evil to me to really understand it, because I, just, like, watching the games, you don't get an understanding at all. You have to, like, read every freaking lore page. I feel like. But, yeah. I'll definitely watch Resident Evil 4, though. I'm sure it'll be interesting. I don't really know what's even happening. Also, another weird thing, too, was Resident Evil 1, 2, or 3 ever remade? Why is it only Resident Evil 4 that's getting a remake? And why does Resident Evil 4 look like it's reusing Resident Evil Village's assets and then maybe adding like a few more things to it? It's giving me like God of War Ragnarok vibes with the way it looks. 
I, I feel like they're just kind of, they add like a couple of features that should have been in the main game already. And then they're going to like ship it. And then it makes like the other game look like a, a beta or something. For the next game. I don't know. I'm just hoping that the game's not like incomplete or something. But I'm sure I I'm sure Capcom probably had this game in the works for a while. Oh, that reminds me. I wonder what Resident well, not Resident. I wonder what uh, Final Fantasy VII is at right now. Is it is it gonna release like the next disc anytime soon? It's been quite a while. Let me let me see real quick. Um, because then that game like did a weird story thing where they leaned into I think it was like Final Fantasy VI as like a a split personality sort of thing, and then I don't know. It, it's too confusing. Final Fantasy Remake Intermission. It's a standalone, standalone chapters playable about, uh, playable outside of the main game. So when, are, when's the next uh, disc gonna come out? There's no way that they just release like the first disc. For Final Fantasy, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we're we're not going to do anything else with the game." There's no way, right? Although I don't like the combat, I I prefer the original turn base uh, fighting. Which I'm pretty sure in this game you can actually switch the modes. I think. Into turn based or just a uh, free roam fighting. At least I think so. I, I can I don't even know. It's been quite a while since I watched gameplay of it. I don't know. It would be nice if they uh, continue it soon. Hopefully, we don't have to wait like uh, how the original one was released. I'm sure that probably took years, unfortunately. Yeah, other than oh my god, it's already forty minutes. Um, I guess I will very quickly. Well, not very very quickly, but I guess we'll just go over the anime segment now. Uh. Yeah, basically, I watched. Crap, I'm already forgetting. I think it's episode 16 through episode 20 of Summertime Rendering. Very good. Very emotional few episodes. Kind of felt like Shinpei was finally getting ahead. But of course. Since there's five episodes left, you have to bring in a twist. And unfortunately, every single twist uh, made me depressed in, in some way. And almost made me cry. Very good. It's always good when an anime can make you cry. Like, I went to eat your pancreas. That'll make you cry, probably, if you have feelings. If you're human. Or a silent voice, that'll probably make you cry. Maybe. I don't know. Depends on how in your feelings you are. And I don't know. I, I tend to I tend to cry whenever I see somebody on screen, movie, T V show, whatever sort of media, I tend to cry with whoever's on the screen sometimes. Or at least I start to tear up, at the very least. 
Anyways, sometime rendering. Unfortunately, I did not make my notes into episode format. I kind of just listed them as it were, well, as I was watching. But I mean, it's just top down. So this segment, yeah, I'm just gonna go through uh, 1620 in that order with my notes. And here we go. Anyways, uh, oh, I got, I also have to read my notes, unfortunately. <laughs> Even though I literally just wrote them like probably like two hours ago when I was watching it, or three hours rather. Uh, okay. So basically, the uh, I have to now pull up the names. Crap. Of course, I wasn't prepared for this, but I wrote down everything on my freaking notepad. Um, hold on, I'll just get the names real quick. Characters. Of course, mobile format is the worst format. All right, all right. Now we go. So, Saito's wife. I'm just going to go with that because I don't see a picture of her. So Saito's wife was essentially trying to uh, kill him for whatever reason within the clinic. Which in the previous episode, they, they were, well not really in the previous episode, within this current episode, they were like, oh, we've con we've converted Mio now. Mio's a, a good shadow, if, if that's a thing. And now she's uh, accompanying the team over to the clinic. And I thought in the previous like few episodes that So was supposed to already meet him because it was like it was night when they were fighting uh, Shide and uh, Haine and like the school grounds. So, yeah, they, they all go to the clinic. I'm pretty sure they, like, tried to find their... No, I do remember. They they were looking for their mom at the clinic. She wasn't there. They, I think they went to, like, a, the hospital. Uh, Ushio detected that there was, like, a, a shadow in the basement. And they go down there. They find the chair that their mom... That so in Tokiko's mom was in, and they find a room where Shadow was like trying to flee into. They fail to catch the Shadow. They find a hidden room. They go into the tunnels. Uh, Saito's freaking getting choked out by his wife. It's kind of crazy that Saito was getting choked out. And he told uh, Tokiko to essentially wipe everybody by freaking killing them whatever way that she could. That was crazy. Another thing that was crazy was that... So, I think... I'm pretty sure So didn't want, like, any revenge. He was just kind of, like, really annoyed with him. I'm not really really annoyed, but he was uh, just mostly like angry at him. Um. Yeah, they they didn't really. I guess I wasn't paying attention. I don't know. Anyways. Uh. Shinpei got really close with a gun. And Saito just like snatches it out of his hands. And then shoots uh, Tokiko. But luck I don't know how. Shinpei knew. That it was going to be. It was not going to be Tokiko. But. Yeah it was. It was freaking. He shot Mio Shadow. That was pretty good. That was like an, a nice win. For the team. They, they've kind of. They've been a little bit too successful I guess. I mean, the only one who really got hurt from the uh, school fight was uh, Ginjiro. 
I think I think it like went deaf in one ear or something. And he had like a some work done with that. And then Hizuru was shot in the left shoulder. And that was I think that was just about like the only losses that they had. And yeah. Um it was really interesting to sh to see that uh well, not really interesting, but it, it was uh, really infuriating to learn that Shide killed uh, Shinpei's mom and dad when they discovered the cave where Haine was in, where, where Haine was residing. That that was kind of an uh, annoying thing to learn. And then uh, the father, for whatever reason, I don't understand like how these dudes get their motives to do whatever but i don't know I, I guess he was just like really in love with his wife he just really didn't care and he just wanted to be with her supposedly in the afterlife because Heine was just trying to produce a family to go back into the i i assume it's just like the sea or to go back into space Wherever it is. I don't understand, like, the end goal, really. But basically, uh, they just wanted to live, like, eternally as a family. And that's not... It's not really what anything wants that's kind of very, uh... Uh, what, what is it? What, what is the freaking word? <laughs> It's not really what everybody wants. It's kind of just like what he wants. Man, I just, I just don't know the words to describe this. I was going to say self-righteous, but self-righteous is not the word. I don't know. Basically, not only he wanted it, and he didn't really consult the family about it. But Ushio uncorrupted his, uh, his wife. His wife told it to him. He changed his mind, and now all of a sudden he's a good guy, even though he like literally shot his his a uh, freaking daughter, or at least like the shadow form of his daughter. And then all of a sudden they're uh, on the same team, supposedly. That, that was like kind of weird to see the flip over the the span of like fifteen minutes. I don't know. I, I guess his wife was really the turning point for him. And then his wife finally passing on as a shadow, which is a, it's an unusual thing, too. Like, what happened to his wife? But yeah, that happened. Um, uh, what is it? Freaking. Saito reveals the history of the Hishigata fan family. That was interesting to learn about that uh, Shidehiko is basically like the, I would guess he would be like the, no, Haine. Haine is like the, the grandparent for the family. And Shidehiko is like, oh wait, no, wait, I got it mixed up. Freaking Shidehiko is the, the grandparent that they're related to and Haine is like an aunt. Never mind, I don't, I don't even know how to freaking say it. Basically, it's just weird to learn that they're all related. Um, well, I'm reading my notes, and I saw a name. And I've already... I'm so freaking forgetful. Oh, man, I I can't even read my own notes. So, Ginjiro, I, I wrote his last name instead of his first name on my notepad. So, it, it was interesting to learn that Ginjiro had his wife as a shadow uh, sealed in his garage, I think it was. That was interesting to learn. And he comes to term with, well, he comes to terms with uh, killing it. 
was kind of interesting to learn that, but he had one sealed. It was his wife. Kind of sad to do. Um, another thing, too, that was interesting was that it didn't really pop up any later on while I was watching, but Heine was kind of like starting to split the personality of Ushio a little bit. Because there, there was a point where Ushio was uh, talking to Shinpei and she had a red eye. But I, I don't think it really popped up later on, as far as I know. Uh, maybe it'll like pop up again later. But uh, it was, it was kind of interesting to see. I, I didn't really... I really notice what she said. I didn't really take note of it. I mean, Shinpei didn't either. So, I don't know. Uh, it was kind of interesting to see uh, Karakiri. I think I'm butchering his name. Or Masahito. It, it was interesting to see him kind of give uh, Shinpei like an intelligence check on his like lore about the shadows and what or whatever and, and it was kind of funny because that like right before the clip they showed uh hizuru or rinosuke whatever one was in control i'm sure it was just like hizuru at the time because she wrote the the swamp man book now talk about shadows and apparently it was like 300 years ago uh, a thing in space was just copying random things, landed, uh, ran out of things to copy, went to Earth, landed in the ocean, copied random things, became a whale, washed up on the island, and winded up being, I'm assuming, near Karakuri's kid, I think? Or just a random kid on the island? I can't remember the specific. I, I can't remember who the the kid was related to who walked up to the whale, and then she was copied. And then, like the wildest thing happens, where the freaking, the shadow. Off screen, freaking eats his eats the kid. <laughs> and then turns into Heine. I don't understand that. But, yeah. And then afterwards, uh, Karakiri kind of becomes uh, Heine's husband. If I, I was like understanding what they said in the episode correctly. Because Heine had a, a shadow human uh, child with Karakiri. And that was kind of, that was really weird. I don't understand why they had to do it like that. But, I don't know. It's just how they chose to write it. And, yeah, basically he just, like, lived for three, after, after that, 300 years to this point in the story and it, it was kind of interesting to learn at this point I always thought that the uh, Saito was the bad guy but really it, it, it's kind of interesting to learn that he he's not really the bad guy he was kind of like sold a fake dream just like Heine kind of because, uh, Mas, well, Karakuri, or I guess it would be Shidehiko, uh, basically, they kind of are selling ha Haine on a dream of supposedly going back and with all of her supposed family 
and taking them with her to whatever shadow realm, literally, and uh, living out their lives or whatever is a, a family. And I, I don't know. It's kind of interesting to learn that he's not actually the bad guy. And it's actually just Harakiri, who at like the very start of the show, he was kind of, he was, he was just like introduced and then immediately dropped off. And then like same for Saito. Saito was introduced in the first wipe where they got to the end of the timeline. The show Saito for a split second with his wife, who's a shadow. And then they all just wipe, get wiped out. It's kind of crazy to that he's not that he was like kind of teased to be the bad guy, but he's not. He wasn't really. And it was actually just Kyra Curry. And let's see. Oh yeah, and then uh, Shin Pei, for whatever reason, decides to go up to Kyra Curry and talk to him with Ushio at the temple. And they the finally found a way to get a, another one up on Shinpei and it absolutely just like ruin everything. It just freaking exposes Karakuri of everything. Ushio rushes and kills. I I guess it would be the the human form of Karakuri. But not really. I don't really know. I don't really know who, which, which one they killed. I don't know if it's like the human or not, or if it's a a human at all. I can't even tell if like they're in like a a simulation at this point because it, it's a little bit. The plot's like a little bit too thick. I don't really understand it. Yeah, basically they they talk it out. Ushio kills him. And then uh, the thing that pissed me off the most is uh, Shidehiko hiding in the background somehow and absolutely just pulverizing Ushio and just killing her with a spear, which means that she can no longer reset with Shinpei and she's uh, no longer around. That That really pissed me off. And then to and then after that, you know, Shinpei gets freaking speared or kebobbed rather into a freaking tree. And uh, it's really annoying. What what I don't understand is like why? I I I guess I feel like when alone. I guess I kind of did like limit the losses. I guess ever I guess a lot more people would die instead of just like Ushio, if uh he went in with other people. And oh crap, freaking dude's alive. Um. Uh, who is it? There it is. Whoops. I have to look back on that freaking. What time is it? Freaking fifty-eight. But yeah, that that was freaking terrible. My bad. Freaking dude, I was talking about earlier went live, and I have to watch. Or at least put them on in the background. I'm not going to watch them yet. Uh, the the reset point was exactly when uh, Ushio helped Shinpei out of a tree when they saved the, the three kids. And that, that was like really unfortunate for him because now he has to find a way around everything without Ushio and I mean Ushio kind of put everything in like easy mode for him but now he's like extremely vulnerable and then Hizuru 
has a, a a nice little fight with Shide a little bit. But yeah, it didn't really turn out that good. Unfortunately. Because the shadow can learn. And the thing that was crazy is that Hizuru had the chance to say that Shirihiko was going for like an alternate ending that wasn't Haine's like main uh goal. I'm wondering if that's like is that I'm assuming it's obviously gonna be like the, the final plot point is like Haine turning on sh uh Shide Hiko. Because uh Haine copied Shinpei. Which I I thought that was like the worst thing. Like, why didn't Ushio copy Shinpei already and get rid of his shadow? But I guess now it makes sense because now Haine has she Shinpei all of Shinpei's memories. So now I I feel like with everything he's experienced, because now he's able to like share memories and stuff. I feel like when he resets again. Uh, Haine is going to be like a little bit more lenient towards Shinpei. Because he, he witnessed like firsthand what Shidehiko said. About uh, him saying my ending instead of uh, her ending. Because uh, she's the one that's supposedly supposed to matter in their relationship. But. Yeah. And then. All because uh, Shinpei wants to save Mio from the shoot uh, the sewers because uh, she was killed after I think Hizuru Hizuru win I I forget what he was freaking doing at the time I think it was during uh, Ushio and Shinpei were on their way to meet up. With the other group that they the Hishikata group was so and all them that uh Mio was announced dead because she went into the sewers because she was lured out by a uh, Haine posing as Shinpei and they like Haine just like wiped the whole squad. And then uh Hizuru has the rematch with uh Shidehiko where she gets absolutely eviscerated because the, they learn and she she only has like one trump card being Rinosuke and now she's permanently dead and it was crazy too that uh Hizuru was able to transfer Rinosuke over to Shinpei and that also that 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 scene actually freaking that, that hit me freaking hard. I I shed a couple of tears for that. that. That was really sad. Cause she, she did a lot for the group. She also she also died a decent bit too. She died with a, a shotgun to the shotgun to the face. She got sludge hammered in the head. Uh, she she took a lot of shots for the group. It's kind of crazy. And then now she's up. Uh, Permanently dead with a, a spear through the chest, unfortunately. It's uh, it's crazy. And now, I have only five episodes left of this really good series. And I don't know what I'll watch when it's over. Probably like some random romance thing. I don't know. I had to find another 25 episode series if there are any. Yeah, it's very good so far. I'm assuming probably toward the end, I'm just going to make a, a prediction because I feel like I already know what's going to happen. Uh, Haine having Shi uh, Shinpei's memories uh, will possibly switch sides. Uh, Shinpei is going to use the Rinosuke trump card to kill Shirehiko and get revenge for Ushio. Uh, Shirehiko's plans is going to get revealed to Haine. And I feel like Shinpei is going to definitely come to, def to defense of Haine. And to be honest, I feel like... I, 
I feel like it's gonna have a fairy tale ending, and everybody's gonna come back to life. I feel like they're gonna do something like that, or she's gonna make her shadows. Uh, I maybe she'll like barf up the the shadows' bodies, and since uh you can have the shadow human hybrid, right? I feel like Shinpei is gonna stay on the island with Shadow Ushio. And they're gonna stay together like that, or maybe Shinpei will stay with Mio, whomever he decides uh, is his lover, because that's like the 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 subgenre is romance, and between Ushio, Mio, and Shinpei, I don't know, or they don't, or, or they don't even do it like any romance at all, and they kind of just like leave it open. And Shinpei just stays with Usho and Mio on the island with Alan. Or maybe just everybody's just permanently dead. Who's next? Who are they going to kill next? They're, they're going to send Ginjiro packing, unfortunately. It was like my favorite character. Along with Hizuru. Because they're both like really good with weapons and that type of combat. I don't know. Also, I'm pretty sure Rinosuke has memories of past fights. So Rinosuke is going to use that against uh, Shidehiko as well in the combat. So I'm pretty sure he was the one who was able to like uh, do the memory thing for Hizuru. To trigger Hizuru's memories. With like whatever she was doing with her phone. I, th I think. Yeah. Either it's a fairy tale... I feel like it's going to be a fairy tale ending, but to be honest, I would also be satisfi satisfied if uh, the people who died are permanently gone. Actually, no, that's a lie. I wouldn't be satisfied. Anyways, yeah. I feel like Heine is most definitely probably going to switch sides. Yeah, and that's about it for this. I'm going to probably watch all that. I don't, I don't even think I want to do it all at once. I think we could do it over three days. No, I'm going to do it over two days. I'm going to watch two episodes, and then I'm going to watch the next three another day. Take a nice bite. and be freaking amazing. Hopefully it has a satisfying ending. And that's it for my summertime uh, rendering review and next week is the last one and hopefully you enjoyed listening to coco's thoughts and uh i'll see you next sunday or rather talk to you next sunday not see you this is a zoom call peace